Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and as I look back on an epic but otherwise imperfect voyage to Tylo, I consider the other options that I should have perhaps pursued before I set out. Now, triple docking. Triple docking is a technique to increase the strength of docking ports, the idea being that the game does let multiple docking ports align and connect at the same time, if they all connect. So here we are using a tricoupler to connect two spacecraft, both with very large engines. Unfortunately, you can see from that uh, first attempt, only one of them actually has the undock option. The other three are sitting in an undocked state. You have to get them all lined up perfectly, and this is one of the more frustrating things to attempt. The idea is that if with the struts and three docking nodes, we should be able to put much more force through this docking interface and thereby use more powerful engines and cut down on the amount of wobbling. So uh, this is just me trying and trying and trying again to get a docking with all three ports simultaneously. Uh, again, no juice. <laughs> and there we go again. Now, I figured out in the end the most reliable way is to try and get both bodies aligned to a, not just a fixed point in the sky but also align their horizons so that the docking nodes are as close to perfectly lined up as possible. This however is still very difficult because the frame of reference is rotating and your accuracy, even, even a few seconds, can make a difference to your alignment. But uh, nonetheless, it was one of the more frustrating things I've had to do, and I would not recommend it. Also, you'll note that these ones I've set up with uh, triple ports, and then underneath it is a single port. The idea being that after we perhaps voyaged all the way to Jewel, we would detach the triple unit and switch to the single unit because we wouldn't need the extra force after for the return journey. We'd only really need it for the drive unit on the way out. And we don't want to carry this triple port all the way down to the surface of Tylo because it adds a bunch of extra weight that we're otherwise really not going to have much utility for. And nope, still no good. This could take a while. Now, if you don't get them all lined up, what will happen is as soon as you accelerate, or if you don't get them all docked, as soon as you accelerate, your whole thing will flip out and explode, uh, which is not good, so try and avoid it. It would be really nice, I guess, if you could have docking ports that had a, a rotate option on them, so you could rotate and dock after the fact. Uh, <laughs> that, might, that might be nice. Alternatively, um, it would just be be nice to have some more information on the UI. I think I think the nav ball needs an extra marker for target orientation as well. You see, here we are. I'm li lining up the horizons best as possible. I'm trying to get them so that when we do dock, all three ports touch simultaneously. But as you can see, as I'm moving around the planet, the horizon is rotating. That's why it's very important to get these things lined up uh, at the same point in time. Also, the targeting is based off uh, is not based off docking port to docking port. It would be really nice to have the nav ball target use the docking port that you're controlling uh, and the docking point port you set as a target. That way, you'd at least be able to line those things up. I don't know. I, I think it, the game's not really set up for triple docking. It is an option for very good players, very patient players, but uh, I don't think that it's for everyone. There we go, and I think that is us, that is our final docked configuration, so we have to right click on each docking node to check that it has the undock option. That's two, and that's three, we have a successful triple docked spacecraft. Now to test this engine, see how much force it can take. Activate the engine and ramp things up, see what happens. Well, you can see it getting compressed under the load, and as soon as it starts to roll off center, well, the whole thing starts to rotate. So, I don't know, we got up to like 50% thrust on a mainsail there. That's uh, way better than single docking ever managed, but it's not necessarily enough of an advantage to for me to care, <laughs> let's say.
Like, granted, we would probably not be using a main sail for this, but I, I picked the main sail on this test rig because the main sail has the best thrust to weight ratio of anything we can throw up there. The whole vehicle was, was launched into orbit and then uh, the docking, the thing was undocked after the fact. Let's try that again. 30% thrust, 40% thrust, about 60% thrust, and now we start to rotate at 100, but at least the thing doesn't explode. Uh, that's, you know, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes, times four time acceleration. Uh, it cannot handle the stress of that, so don't do it. <laughs> I mean, normal spacecraft have trouble handling uh, four times time acceleration, never mind crazy hacks that are docked together like this. I, I think, you know, it'd be nice in future versions to have a, not so much a docking port, but a spacecraft coupler that has orient is orientation dependent. There we go, look at this thing! Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. If anyone has ever tried to drive a, a reverse a vehicle with a trailer, you'll know what's going on there. Anyway, I'd say it's probably not worth the effort for most people because I came up with a better idea. I took my basic tanker option and well, I didn't even adapt the design. I adapted the landing vehicle and instead I added docking ports underneath each of the tanks. And so I could take my standard tanker and dock it in onto each of these. Now there we're just going to bring it in very carefully using RCS. Now obviously I've refueled everything in orbit. Of course I didn't. I just cheated this whole thing up just to demonstrate what we could do. Uh, <laughs> I, I have only so little, so much time right now because it is Christmas holidays and I have a family and they all demand attention in all sorts of ways. But this is relatively easy to dock. The The only thing I would say about this is that once you start this docking, you don't want to be flying the main spacecraft around. So the tankers have to be the active spacecraft in all the docking options. It's easy enough to get them on there. But if you try to fly these things around and it's asymmetrical, then you're going to have trouble. That's two. Get the third one in there. We've almost got a whole load. And between these, we should definitely have enough fuel to get ourselves onto a Tylo, into Tylo orbit and have more than enough to return. There we go, we have a complete spacecraft. And now we can fire up the engines to take it into uh, a test drive. Sure enough, after a couple of orbits, uh, it works fine. This is at four times time acceleration. Sure, uh, it is turning red to tell us that it's stressed, but honestly, I wish I'd done this instead. It saved so much time. But coolest of all, perhaps, is a redesigned lander. Now, um, you can see this attached to the front of a regular three-man crew capsule. And, yep, it's going to be another one of these crazy harebrained schemes where the astronauts have to hang off the side. We have a nuclear engine in the middle, and we have some fuel tanks feeding into the middle. Uh, there's no nothing, no fuel tank sitting on top of that. This whole thing has something like over 8 kilometers per second of delta V, assuming you can remain in the vacuum. However, it has a thrust to weight ratio of less than 1 initially. So to land this on Tylo, you have to come in in such a way that you burn up enough fuel before you even get into a landing trajectory. And although you see Mech Jeb here running with all its instrumentation, I was unable to get Mech Jeb to actually land this thing safely, so I, I pretty much used this with the smart ASS to adjust my landing vector, and even then, it wasn't the best landing. You see uh, one of my poor Kermans getting knocked off the lander, but um, after we land, it's easy enough to get back on board. Having those tanks lets us adjust, lets us walk around a corner and then stand up so we can hook onto these things. And from there, even though we've got a uh, less than, you know, less than 10% of our fuel, no, we've got less than 30% of our fuel, more than enough for us to get into orbit, because getting into orbit was a whole lot easier. We didn't have to burn off all that weight. We had a much higher thrust to weight ratio. Um, for docking, you want the other spacecraft to be active because it has the RCS. Oh yeah, and when you're doing this, 
try to make sure you keep all your kerbals on the ladders because in this case Bob actually fell off during the docking <laughs> where's Bob where's Bob come on we left him behind we didn't leave him behind in the surface oh no there he is floating in space a couple of well 1.3 kilometers away close enough that we can at least go and you know have him fly back under his own power and <laughs> for the return trip so yeah conclusion not for the faint of heart but i will point out that this lander has enough delta v and thrust to land on any planet that doesn't have an any planet or moon that doesn't have an atmosphere you could probably land on duna but they might get blown off by the atmosphere meanwhile uh we left dual probe in orbit uh in this highly eccentric orbit so i decided to adjust its periaps using the remaining fuel to bring it down as close to the sun as possible so that we might do some solar science uh wait no it's solar would apply to the sun some kerbal science some bowler maybe yes let's call it bowler science anyway yeah uh, we don't have much thrust left we have maybe 100 meters per second well honestly i didn't know until i started burning how much thrust we would have left there we go, burning its tiny, tiny, tiny engine. Yeah, not even 100 meters per second, but it was enough to get us down below 1 million kilometers, or 1,000 kilometers, 1 million kilometers, so we can admire the surface of this sun up close. Anyway, I'm off to land my kerbals on various planetary bodies using my new lander. Until next time, fly safe.